Hello and welcome to a uh, conversation with the socialist, uh, or it's kind of like transitioning into uh, talking MMT. My guest today is Steve Grumbin, who is the founder of Real Progressives and Ma uh, Macaroon Cheese, uh, Real Progressives in Action on YouTube. Is that all that right? It's all on YouTube? It's close enough. You start combine and then you go with Progress in Action. And I'm the host of a podcast called Macro and Cheese. So, oh, but you got it all right. <laughs> it's six and one half dozen the other, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being on. Uh, first of all, it's my first time actually interviewing anybody that has any knowledge of MMT. Uh, getting more and more into it. It's the only thing that, as far as economic knowledge that makes more sense to me than anything else regards to, you know, just overall you know, just how things are uh, done, you know, in the functional, in the functional economy. So I've been looking more, I've been kind of obsessed with this in regards to uh, the, the theory of M MMT. And so when I started watching more and more on YouTube, I, I started guilt in uh, uh, basically, uh, basically everybody that's involved in this, uh, I started like really paying attention to the stock market and the treasuries and all that stuff. But then I looked and since I'm, I, I'm uh, politically inclined to be a socialist, uh, not communist or a Democrat or anything of that sort. So by I look at what the definitions of what socialism is, and it basically goes along with the same lines of MMT, but I know if you know that MMT is more of a way of looking at it and not exact and not necessarily uh, um, a policy a, a policy choice. It's it's basically it's basically what policy makers choose to do in order to make the economy work for everybody else. Does that, does that sound about right? Um, sure. I mean, we can explore that. Okay. Well, uh, one of the first questions I wanted to say was, uh, what, what got you inter interested in doing uh, the uh, Real Progressive? So, you know, years ago, um, before Bernie had announced, we were fighting with a group of people called Real Democrats, and they were taking a lot of pot shots at Bernie Sanders before he had really announced and basically calling progressives, you know, not real Democrats. And at the time, I didn't have any real perspective of what that meant. And as we got deeper into it, I was like, you know what, the hell with that. We're real progressives. I'm not a real Democrat. I'm a real progressive. And so we went ahead and broke free from all of our old buddies because they were kind of keeping us in a box. And we started this thing. And at first, it was just a small Facebook group. And then it grew into a Facebook page and then a YouTube channel. And then we really doing stuff with it and going out and getting into the streets and going to conferences and working with academics and started probably just the same as you're starting right now, you know, in our living room, trying to make things happen. And um, we realized that this was just so important. Um, this, this concept of modern monetary theory, uh, the concept of how that worked with the progressive movement and why the progressive movement and socialist endeavors had always been a complete failure. Nobody had ever understood how to answer the question of how to pay for it. And so we decided that we were going to take that on as activists because academics, they speak a different language than we do. And they talk to a different community than we do. And they have different sensibilities and they have different battles they're willing to fight. And I was tired of watching the mattered to me not get fought because let's be fair you know when you're dealing with people that are millionaires and stuff like that they have a different uh set of things that matter to them than people that are you know literally living hand to mouth and paycheck to paycheck so i wanted to take my own personal experience which had been devastating from the great financial crisis and turn that into something positive and that's how real progressives came to be hmm. And uh, I, I noticed there's a lot of other people that are, in, are, that are involved with the Real Progressive. Uh, how many people do you have that's involved in that? Well, that's a kind of a trick question because we've got about 130,000 followers on Facebook. Um, YouTube, um, you know, just under 10,000 because we didn't really invest in that channel very much. We stayed largely on Facebook. Um, but we've got two, we, we've actually graduated from that to nonprofits. We, we actually have a, Real Progressives is a 501c3 tax deductible, uh, you know, charitable organization where we educate people on policy and, and media and, you know, basically the whole modern monetary theory spectrum. Um, but we also talk about socialism and we also talk about 
um, you know, basic needs and, and things that are important to regular people. We have seven knowledge areas over there, which starts with economic justice, peace with justice, equality with justice. And then we have uh, democracy, health and well-being, and technology and innovation. So we really focus on a wide range of things, but with the underlying focus being modern monetary theory, because none of those things come to be if you don't understand how to pay for it. Right. Um, but over on the 501c4 side, which is real progress in action, that's where we get political. That's where we can uh, get involved in political candidates, races, fundraising, spot endorsing, doing different things that we can't really get away with um, legally on the 501c3. So it's, it's two, two nonprofits, and we've got lots of volunteers working behind the scenes. We've got lots of activists. We've got our fingers in a lot of places. And um, yeah, we've been doing this for six years. So we've, we're, we're pretty well known in the U.S. and we're known actually around the world. Uh, we've got a lot of followers in Australia and the U.K., Spain, Italy. Um, heck, we've even got them in Russia, China, and Africa, and down in the South America. So we're, we're kind of global at this point. That was nice. I'm, I've been trying. I've been uh, striving to do myself, my my uh, brand, as it were. Uh, <laughs> now, in your opinion, do you think that with the stimulus checks and what Biden's trying to do, regardless of the stimulus, uh, well, the stimulus bill that just passed, do you think he's trying to like tip his toes in the water of MMT, or do you think it's just trying to get uh, the economy back up? Well, so first things first, the president doesn't write bills. The president tells people what he wants, but then Congress and the Senate have to go back and forth and, and write a bill. So Biden, notwithstanding, people that are in important places, people that are I revere and think are very, very brilliant, are in there advising congressional figures like Ayanna Presley, who just put forward a federal job guarantee. And uh, they were very involved, uh, people like Sarah Nelson, Stephanie Kelton, Bob Hockett, um, Fadl, entire Modern Money Network. Um, a lot of them are advising many of these candidates. Now, what they get advice for on the economic side and the policy side is not necessarily the same thing as their political campaign directors and stuff like that who advise them of what to say, what not to say, which tends to piss most of us progressives and leftists off because they tend to hedge their bets and kind of make nice with the establishment um, uh, because they, you know, quite frankly, they want to try and live to fight another day. It drives me crazy. And as an activist, I don't have to be kind and gentle like the uh, academics and the, the advisors do. Um, we're able to call a spade a spade. They're out there trying to make progress in a cesspool of hell with uh, the political bodies that are captured by big money and oligarch, you name it. So they've got a lot of things to deal with inside. We've got our own uh, mission on the outside to try to force them to pay attention to our needs and force them to pay attention to what we're, our, uh, you know, our, our issues are. As far as Joe Biden goes, Joe Biden has a 50 year record of absolute Republican like behavior. He, he has always been an abomination in my eyes. Everything about the man, um, you know, from his desire to cut Social Security and everything else and to his obvious desire to sweeten Wall Street and, and also his, his heavy handedness with bankruptcy laws and student debt. And he's, he's just not been somebody who I felt like was a really decent human being. Uh, he's got sexual harassment charges, sexual uh, misbehavior all over the place. And, you know, and he's been protected by people who otherwise would have supported the Me Too movement, but because he's a Democrat, they, they turn a blind eye. And that, that's pretty disgusting to me to allow that to happen, have a character flaw, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, these, the, you know, Biden is taking, you know, a lot of stuff from Congress. And, and it seems like, even though it's kind of weak and not what any, anybody of my ilk would like, mm -hmm. um, it does seem to be different than what you've seen in past times. I mean, remember Obama during the great financial crisis only put 800 billion out there. They yeah. just put 1.9 trillion, no matter how bad they screwed us on stimulus checks, no matter how bad they screwed us on all that other stuff. As an MMT person, forget the politics. Mm -hmm. As an MMT person, you have to see this as a, as a positive in the sense that Hey, nobody's talking about deficits right now. Nobody's worrying about the government blowing up the deficit or blowing up the national debt. 
So we, we are seeing clear evidence that we are making progress. Yeah. Um, no so doubt. to me, that is a 